Hi, I'm Nat. And I'm Lo. And this is our 20% project where we go around Google learning about all the stuff we're curious about. You've probably heard the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? But we think the answer to what really came first was the bad idea. That wasn't exactly bad, but just something that was still figuring out what it wanted to be. In this episode, we're not going to solve the mystery of what that bad idea eventually became. But we are talking with a couple of people, Alex and Chris, who believe that every good idea starts off as a bad idea. We're both part of a team called the Airbender. The Air in Airbender stands for Advanced Interaction Research and the Bender stands for Bender. It's a physical interaction research team, which basically means that they get to try and invent new ways to use technology other than the ways we're already using it. Like using a mouse or typing or tapping or talking. All the hopes of making technology easier to use or just more fun. The team is actually half design and strategy and half engineering. And so everybody can build enough to be dangerous. We use the technology as a provocation for new ideas. It helps people visualize a future that maybe they haven't thought of. So how exactly does one try to invent the future? We have this methodology we use that starts with technology. And when he says technology, he means lots of technology. Accelerometers, gyroscopes, barometric pressure sensors. Tilt switches, computer vision, 3D cameras, thermal imaging cameras, Wi-Fi, Arduinos, microcontrollers. Say, for instance, Bluetooth and Bluetooth beacons. And we say, look, everybody is using Bluetooth beacons for indoor localization or for um, kind of just-in-time information. And we say, what's something else we could do with this tech? And then they basically just start making stuff. We don't really discuss, like, is that a good idea or not? Because it's always a bad idea, um, at least initially. But in the process of making something, they might make a mistake. Or something unexpected will happen, and you're like, man, that's so much better than the idea we had. And actually, some of, the, some of our best projects have come out of, uh, of the, this sort of mistake. How, how are you going to wow us? How am I going to wow you? Wow. Yeah. Both of you have the wowing uh, yeah. duties. Let's say, for instance, you know, that you're at a wedding or some social event, and there's a photo booth. Right? And what we wanted to explore here was a way to remove a lot of the complexities around that. So the way it works is you get to control the booth with your phone and a few gestures, and then all the photos that you take get to go straight to your phone. Boris on our team wrote this sonic communicator that basically just took a number on the screen of your phone and sent it to a laptop over sound. And it was completely worthless. Like, it was the, (laughs) what do you do with that? But we spent the whole day, like, sending seven to him because we could see it on his screen. We just thought that was so neat. And after continuing to evolve that idea and showing it around to some different people on different teams, it eventually became Google Tone. It's a Chrome extension that lives in your browser bar, and it's a nice little blue megaphone button. And when you press it, it sends the URL you're looking at to any computer that's within earshot over audio. I'm just going to hit the megaphone button. You just got a notification from me, and when you click it, boom. So say you're in a meeting or you're a teacher and you're trying to get all your students to the same website, you don't have to like email them or write out a URL. All you have to do is send them a little So we worked on parts of cardboard, but the kind of the most, the most visible part was the magnet input on the first cardboard. If you don't know, cardboard is this thing made out of cardboard, of course, that turns your phone into a virtual reality viewer. And the magnet is actually like a button that you can use to control it. And you're not going to hook up a mouse to it, because... We tried all kinds of things. We tried. Oh, wow. I'm really glad you didn't do that. Not a good one. We tried whistling. Oh. And actually, it turns out, like, lots of people can't whistle. I was going to say. And even when they can, then you had a room full of people going... (laughs) So, yeah, the magnet was a good solution. And they're also experimenting with a bunch of other stuff, like for people in developing countries where data is really expensive, how they might be able to share stuff when they're offline, or how with gestures we can make sharing digital stuff with our friends easier, as well as exploring haptic feedback, basically making things vibrate so a pen feels like a fire torch or an empty cup feels like it's got gumballs rolling around in it. As well as exploring a lot of VR because they're a part of the VR team. But just in case you're wondering, the Airbender team probably isn't working on anything that you've seen in your favorite sci-fi movie. I think that the things that people envision as being cool are things that are good to film. It's about making it visible and making it flash-bangy. 
And I think technology that feels good to use is the exact opposite. My point of view on technology is that it should enable people to live a better life with less hindrance. I really like this idea of making digital things tangible. So a book that is a book on which the pages can fill with anything. It's almost like a Harry Potter approach to technology, yeah. right? Where it's the, the way it works is a little more magic than it is science. And I, re I really think that, that ultimately that's the future I like. So on Radiolab recently, there was a story about penicillin and how like this wonderful drug was invented completely by accident because there was an open window and a Petri dish and some mold blew in through the window onto the Petri dish and that was penicillin. And I think what we really liked about that story, as well as the Airbender team, is like there's this element of serendipity to this process. Instead of trying to invent the future with a lot of planning and step-by-step -step preparation, they're trying to invent it, you know, a little bit by accident. As the expression of our thanks and kind of what we consider one of the precursors to real interaction design, we have a gift for you. You got us a clapper. Oh, <laughs> this is so exciting. Thank you so much. Awesome. That is awesome. Should we end this episode with a clap? <laughs> wow, did you even clap? <laughs>